My name is Gene Freeman. I'm the superintendent uh, here at Cross Chapel. I'd like to welcome all of you. This is a follow-up from our safety meeting that we had last year and some things that we had discussed that we were looking at last year have come to fruition and we'll be talking about those tonight. Uh, I'd like to introduce our board members that are here first. Uh, I saw Mr. Summer Obenauer. Do you want to wait for him? Um, uh, Nancy Foster. Uh, okay, and is, is Eric, I want to do Eric last. So. Any, anybody else here? Any other board members? Eric Schmidt, who is really uh, the board member taking the lead on uh, the direction of safety and improvements in that area and the school district. Uh, with that said, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. McCommon, the deputy superintendent, to come up and introduce some folks, and then we'll get started with our safety meeting. Thanks, Dr. Freeman. As Gene shared, we are here this evening just to provide you with some of the enhancements we made to our safety procedures that we share with you in the spring. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things we did today was a evacuation to uh, a remote location at two of our buildings, and we will be doing it others. Uh, but we had to take an initial step today. And I want to thank uh, our local law enforcement who are very interested in us uh, in being able to accomplish that today. I'm actually going to ask, would the chiefs that are with us here this evening please stand up and say hello to everybody, and also we have several officers with us from Indiana Township. Do we need a, a mic right? Yeah, that'd be great. So I'm going to start here with Steve. Steve Glucci, a sergeant with Indiana Township, please. David Lawson, the current chief, Fox Chapel, please. Chief George Buca, the Long Island Police Department. Uh, Officer Carney, I'm in the SRL up here at the high school at Harrah Township. Uh, Scott Slegel, Chief of Harrah Township. Dave Nunder, Acting Chief, Basketball Police Department. Tom Stelletano, Chief of Sharpsburg Police Department. And uh, Chief Wilson said his regrets. Unfortunately, he had a prior commitment. Uh, again, he was very helpful in everything we were trying to do uh, in pulling off our, uh, our activity today. Also, we have district administration from each of our elementaries, the middle and the high school. Uh, our administrators are with us here this evening. I don't know if you were able to uh, attend our last school board meeting, but we were able to hire our own coordinator of safety and security for the district. And we feel very honored to have this gentleman joining us as the first official day will be October the 15th. Uh, but Mr. Joe Kassarian is here with us and he's gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna be doing with our Fox Chapel <laughs> Area School District Police Department. As always, we're gonna, our main purpose and main goal will be the safety and security of our students and also about building relationships. Building relationships with our students and also with our current local law enforcement. They've been very supportive in everything we need to do, in keeping our children safe. And I know that Joe is gonna come in, develop a plan, we'll be sharing that with you uh, at some time in the future. But I wanted, I just wanna have the opportunity to meet Joe and talk about what the main purpose of our student, uh, Fox Chapel Area School District Police Department is. Joe? Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Kazarian. I am your new safety and security coordinator for Fox Chapel School District. Uh, just a few things about me. Uh, I've been in the school district for 16 years. Uh, safety and security as far as school is uh, I'm very passionate about. So uh, I am honored to be here. Uh, I have this great opportunity. Uh, but I'll tell you what, to see the, uh, the response uh, from you, the, the community, and then having all the police officers here from uh, every uh, area, it, you don't see that in other school districts. Uh, you don't see that kind of response from the other uh, uh, police departments. So it's going to be an honor to uh, work with these gentlemen and ladies, and, uh, and it's all about the kids' safety. Thank you very much. Okay. 
So as far as the school police officers, uh, they will be trained as school resource officers. Uh, basically what a school resource officer is, law enforcement officer first. Uh, he's there to protect your children. Uh, second thing is he's there to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the students. And then he's also there as a mentor. And he's basically there as far as a, a semi-professional teacher or a guest speaker where he gets into the classroom or she gets into the classroom and talks about law-related stuff. Uh, basically, bridging that gap, getting that trust uh, with the students and the administration, and that way we can try to prevent things from happening uh, to where you end up having those situations where they end up coming to your door, to your hallway, uh, or to your classroom. So we want to try to prevent. Uh, the school district right now has two SROs doing a great job far as uh, bridging that gap, and we're just going to hire four, four more and basically put them in the elementary school and just basically do the same thing. Uh, bridging that gap, assisting the administration, and supporting the kids and keeping the uh, students safe and administration safe. So uh, are there any questions about that as far as the school resource officers? They are there to prevent kids from getting into the justice system. Uh, I like to say that we try to prevent them from getting into the justice system and basically trying to mentor them so they don't make that mistake again. So uh, the officers are not there to put kids in the justice system, they're there to try to prevent them from getting in the justice system. So, uh, you know, that's as far as the SROs. Reducing crime. Now, as far as physical security of buildings, uh, the biggest problem with school districts and pretty much any business is access control. You have to control uh, the people coming in and out of your building. And that goes anyways. You know, the less people you have in your building, less chances you have problems. So putting stuff in place like card access systems, uh, definitely can take the keys away from the people because keys are basically the worst thing you can have because people will duplicate keys. So if you have a key, if you're in a business and you have to change your key out and say, six months to a year, I can guarantee you, uh, pretty much everybody in your community probably has that keys. So it's very important to prevent people from uh, uh, having access to keys. Card access is the way to go as far as most businesses and school districts. Video surveillance, uh, once again, it's a great deterrent. Uh, also, it, you know, if you have surveillance as far as keeping things away from your school district, as far as overgrown bushes, trees, things like that. So when officers drive by, they should be able to see your entire school. And that's including with well-lit areas. And like I said, bushes only about four feet high or three feet high, and trees nothing below like maybe five or six feet. So that way when the officer drives by in his patrol car, they're able to see the entire school because you don't want people hiding out behind uh, trees or bushes and things like that where they can cause vandalism or damage to your school. Like I said, access control, security keys, magnetic locks. As far as the Sally Port, uh, I've noticed some of the schools, I've only been able to get to three schools so far. Uh, but like I said, I don't start until the 15th. But uh, there were Sally Ports that put into the school. And basically, what you're doing with the Sally Port is you're basically deterring and you're delaying any type of threat. So it, it might be an inconvenience to you as the, uh, the mother or father coming to school every day. But believe me, it's, it's to protect the children and protect the staff. So having that Sally port in there, and they always talk about layers. The more layers you have as far as um, objects, doors, gates, whatever, the less chance that someone's gonna try to uh, do harm to uh, that school district or to that, you know, the staff. <coughs> Reinforced by <coughs> visitor management system. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then, like I said, as far as magnetic locks, uh, controlling access to the uh, to the school as far as uh, keeping everybody uh, in line. Natural surveillance, adequate lighting. We talked about uh, clear away obstructions such as trees. Like I said, having that visual look. So remember, even if you are driving by your school. You should be able to see the entire school. Nothing should be hidden. Uh, you know, doors, windows, 
everything you should be visible uh, to the naked eye when you're uh, walking by your school. And video surveillance. Uh, once again, the more cameras, uh, we're in uh, a world now that there's cameras everywhere. Uh, in your workplace, colleges, schools, on the street, highways, intersections, there's cameras everywhere. Even kids, you know, you figure the kids have cell phones. Uh, there's video surveillance everywhere. Yeah, pretty much you can't really do anything without being recorded. And as far as the equipment, uh, I have to uh, assess the schools yet. Uh, still trying to get an understanding as far as what the schools have. Uh, so once I get a better understanding uh, as far as uh, the equipment, software, uh, then I'll be able to uh, give you a better understanding where we want, we want to be as far as maybe a year or two down the road. And as far as layer and redundancy, uh, I talk about this all the time. You can just keep hitting. Not necessarily every school should have this, but all this stuff is layers and all this stuff is redundancy. You should never have just one door. You should never have just one lock or one camera. Uh, basically, all this stuff will help keep our children safe. You don't need it all, but it's definitely a, a start. So if you can go, like I said, a school resource officer is probably the best thing you can do uh, as far as uh, trying to prevent that uh, disaster from happening in your school, because it's a great deterrent. You have an officer in your school that can handle any situation uh, that would come to their doors. And then as far as, and I'll let Jay talk about that. For, uh, and then like I said, as far as go bags, uh, I've noticed the teachers today having go bags. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure what's in them. I haven't been around long enough to see, uh, but it's nice to see that as far as go bag. Uh, camera system, reinforced glass for the, inter, uh, for the uh, secretaries uh, trying to uh, deal with uh, people coming into the office. Uh, updated fire systems. Fire systems, phone systems do so much more now. So uh, I'm gonna evaluate that and uh, assess the uh, fire system and phone system and see where we can uh, go from there. Notification, smart boards, having these uh, projectors in every classroom, uh, you can use them as notification. So not only do you want your cell phone or your email, you want multiple things that you can notify your staff. So uh, we're definitely on our way here. I see some of it's already implemented. So uh, you know, as far as the school district, they're in pretty good shape. Uh, fencing, security gates, upgrading lighting, and access control and signage. Signage is very important because when you have people come to your school or even in your office or wherever you work at, uh, you don't want people wandering around your school. So you have to have that proper signage so people <coughs> know exactly where you want them to go. So it's very important that when people drive onto your school property, the signage will tell them, you know, this is where you want them to go, door one, and that way they can register there. If not, they're gonna find that open door, they're gonna find just walking around your school until they can find that open door and walk in, which you don't want to happen. So um, that's basically all I have. Like I said, I start October, or October 15th, so I'm excited to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Uh, one of the things that, sadly, in our society today, we have to have uh, a continual uh, police department presence in the school system itself. But uh, we're being progressive in the area to make those uh, steps that are necessary in order, to in order to ensure our students' safety. And one of the things that uh, Joe did mention whenever he uh, was talking a little bit about himself that uh, he actually trained over 85 uh, school resource officers over this summer in order to be in schools. So that's one of the reasons that we were fortunate uh, to bring in with part of the district. As a matter of fact, when we were interviewing several different candidates, when he was walking up, some of the candidates that were coming in to interview with us had uh, gone through Joe's training. So we're very excited about the opportunities and what he's gonna be doing uh, for the Fox Chapel Area School District. Now, as far as getting Joe to join us was the first linchpin in moving forward. Uh, as a matter of fact, this Thursday, we're gonna be uh, interviewing additional officers that will be uh, located at the elementary building. 
So, and exactly <laughs> how that's going to work, we have some general ideas, but we needed to make sure that to have Joe on board to get his input before we begin to finalize that information. And of course, as we move forward, we'll be sharing that with uh, our, our board of directors in the community so you know exactly uh, the purpose and what our police force will be doing on a daily basis. Uh, so in moving forward in another uh, new safety measure that we are gonna be putting in this year, I'm gonna turn it over to Megan Chicone. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, so I'm here to share a little bit with you about Luna, which is a digital safety app that we'll be utilizing. And again, um, there are sheets, not on the agenda, but sheets describing different aspects of our safety plan on that back table. Um, so what Luna is, is we really are looking at complete accountability. And so we're accounting for students in real time. We're interacting with faculty. We're giving faculty and staff um, an opportunity to have a panic button should there ever be um, in an emergency situation, and we're also supporting student needs. And so what Luna does um, is it has a high level of interoperability with our student management system. So we use PowerSchool, which allows us to see exactly who is where in what rooms at what time based on student rosters and attendance. And it has such a high level of interoperability that we don't just see attendance for the day, but if a student was in class for period one, for instance, and then perhaps they had an early dismissal where they needed to go to the nurse and not be in that second period, we are so interoperable with the systems that we actually know in real time where they are. And so I'm gonna step away from this slideshow presentation for a minute, just because I'd like to show you sort of the back end of what Rudna is. Um, so I'm going to talk at this a bit. So on this end, we have our dashboard, and this is a dashboard that administrators, local law enforcement will all have access to. Um, on this end, we see what a, a teacher or a staff member would see um, on a daily basis. It's important to note that um, Rudna can be used just through a web browser, or you can also download the app, so we have lots of options for using it. Um, but basically what happens is, if there was an emergency situation, um, a teacher or a staff member who was given access to our system can click this panic button. Whenever you click the panic button, there's a few options. Um, there are some options that we can just immediately select shooter, um, but also there's a field that comes up that you can type more information in. And so when you can type that more information in less of an emergency situation, um, the more information we have, really the better. Um, on this end, we have our dashboard. So immediately what happens whenever someone clicks that panic signal button, let's say, um, and this person is typing in a message, it populates onto the dashboard. It also notifies anyone that we've selected at that level of a role on the back end, so local law enforcement, Joe, administrators, um, and it texts them, it pushes out a push notification to the phone, it emails them, and then it also populates within this dashboard. So we have lots of measures for communication. And the, the really exciting piece of Rudna, uh, other than the fact that it was created specifically for K-12, uh, which is something that we thought was really powerful, is the fact that it is two-way communication. So once a teacher or a staff member pushes this panic signal out, then the administrator on that, that end, whether it be Joe or a local law enforcement or whoever else is in that role, um, can then create an event. And they can initiate that event and push out signals, text messages, push notifications, emails um, to specific teachers of certain buildings, all of the buildings. And so we have that ability to have that two-way communication so we can say in real time what's happening. Um, now something that we're really excited about over on this side, so the teacher dashboard side of BOT, is that we now have real-time rostering. And so what we can do is as a teacher, once the application <coughs> says there's an emergency and this is the emergency, we need to evacuate and go to X location, I can see exactly who was supposed to be with me at that moment. And so I can simply click on these and check those students in. Um, what's nice in addition to that is not only can I check my students in, but <coughs> Jill is a student who is not the same mind that in the hustle and bustle of an emergency happens to join my group, I can actually check her in. Um, there are other functions of Luna that are exciting, but that is really what we wanted. We wanted a place that you could have real-time access to rosters, an ability to push panic signals to law enforcement administrators, and the ability to have a, a two-way communication with 
Um, there are other aspects of it. For instance, if students share their cell phones, um, and most of our student emails, and we have a student that is not checked in, we can actually push a notification to them, email them, text them. Um, we actually saw it done in the presentation. It is something that is a, a newer feature and function um, for the student, but it's, it's going to be something that's very positive as well. Uh, it's important to note that Luna does not do GPS tracking, and so we're not actually tracking people. There's no geofence. It is about communication, um, not about big data. Uh, and so uh, this is just one more, one way that we can help um, track. Um, there's also an aspect on there that if there was a student that was hard to need medical attention, um, there are, that was part of the application that allows us to push notifications for future nurses or EMTs as well. Um, and so we're really excited about the functionality of it. Um, and we hope we never ever have to use it. Uh, but the other final piece that I'll point out is the back end really allows us to also look at data. And so here, if we use, for example, our, our drills and everything else, we have the ability to look at the length of time it took for staff members or students to be checked in. Um, what percentage of students were checked in. And so we were able to look at student logs and faculty logs and say, how did you do in this drill? We have this data to say, where are areas of growth? Where are areas of strength? Um, so that, you know, God forbid we ever need to use something like this, we are at least more prepared to do so. Megan, could you also speak to the process of how we chose? Absolutely, um, sure. So, and in the Fox Chapel Area School District, whenever we are looking at something to implement, we make sure that we include various stakeholders. And so um, what we did for Luna is uh, we started with multiple companies and really allowed them to do sales pitches. Um, we contacted other school districts uh, to see what they were using. We contacted institutes of higher ed to see what they were using. Um, and one of the things that we heard a lot about were basically there were 12 different systems some apps, some just web-based. Um, so we looked at those, and we narrowed it down to four originally, and then two systems that um, could work for all K-12 purposes. Uh, we had um, a meeting here, and we had representatives of parents, um, we had student representatives, um, school board representatives were invited, teachers, our, our Fox Chapel area, um, schools, our Educators Association was also represented. Um, just, and then law enforcement as well. I almost forgot you, sorry. Uh, and we shared really two of them, and Rudna was by far and away the one that um, seemed to shine and meet all of our needs. Um, there, there, was, there was no comment um, from anyone about the other system either in the conversation that we had after the presentations um, or in the follow-up emails. Uh, and so it was, it was kind of a no-brainer in terms of which app we would select. Um, and we're just excited that all the stakeholders are on board to, to utilize this um, uh, for the safety of our students. And I will say that while it's mobile, we've done checks with wireless and data and other things, we would still have paper rosters. We'll still have things in place as backups and we'll go back like we have now. Um, it, it just makes sense. And Joe and I have already had conversations about that as well. So that's it. Yes, sir. I'm Megan. I'm George Stewart. I'm just wondering. Uh, with the panic button being on a, uh, it looks like a computer application, are we going to have some sort of fail safe in place in case either through uh, natural disaster, malicious activity, uh, hacking, somebody gets into the system? Is there going to be some kind of more, uh, you know, backup in case the system is not available? Right. So, in terms of uh, so we can use, Rudna can use just regular data from your cell phone. Um, so, and you can also use our wireless system. So if, if it was something horrific like September 11th, right? I was in Washington, D.C., no one's cell phones worked, um, then we would go with our traditional methods of a typical, you know, connection with our SRO officers, and we would get that message across in the most desperate way possible. Um, but barring something that would really pull down Verizon, T-Mobile, and other networks, and um, our wireless system, we, we feel pretty confident that this can work. Something else that came up, actually, in one of the questions that I asked um, the creator of Rudna was, what if I, am, as a teacher, I'm running out with my students and I don't bring my cell phone, so now, or, or a device. 
you can actually use anyone's device and log in. So as long as I know my username and my password, I can use anyone's device as a, as a user of Rubina, one of our educators, administrators, SROs, um, and then I can use any device to log in as well. So that's something um, to note. But I, again, I think that we continue using the traditional methods that we've been using as our backup fail-safe, and we just add this as an additional layer. Yes? Are you developing a protocol for when it would be appropriate or inappropriate to say text a child who might, who hadn't been logged in? Like, for example, if they were hiding in a closet? Right, and, and it would be dangerous. Or something like that. So the good news is that, that we're being really thoughtful in our rollout of this. This will not roll out into the spring. We have two professional development days dedicated. We work with our association to make sure that everyone is going to be trained appropriately. And so we have been in two months. Once Joe is on board, because he knows he won't work here yet, and I'm already adding to your to-do list, sorry, um, to, to look at those types of aspects. Um, that's a good question. So the push notification is via text message okay. or their, their CL account. So if they were to enable, so we have Gmail for our students at the high school level and the middle school level. And so if they would have their device and allow CL to, to identify them. So I think I, I misspoke when I said push notifications, I should have said text messages. Yeah, so the push notifications are for our users, faculty, staff, local law enforcement. On the school device, not on their like Actually, it's on our personal personal devices. However, they they would want to use it in, in a such emergency. It could also be a, a school device as well. So, yes. Uh, is there any way in the future that if one of our students are in trouble, that they will have the ability to push notifications or text somebody in the office um, alerting them that they need help? Right. So right now we have the district helpline, um, but Rubina does not. Um, allow for that. In, in looking at the systems that that we were identifying, um, the only ones that allow for that actually just immediately called 911 from that phone. So they were a little different. It wasn't sort of multiple layers of it. Um, and most of those, I will say, also had a tracking component um, just so there wouldn't be false alarms or anything like that. Um, and at this time, we were not considering that. Okay. I'm going to step up unless someone else asks another question. Thanks. Another layer that we're going to be implementing, uh, which is anticipated start time of November, is the Raptor Visitor Management System. So, whenever, uh, and we're going to be developing the exact protocol and we'll be sharing that with faculty, uh, all staff, and of course parents about uh, visitors into each of our buildings. Uh, so, we did purchase a system and computer for the main entrances at the high school, middle, and all four of the elementary schools. And it also provides an emergency notification for the staff member that is actually using that device whenever checking in visitors. It provides uh, an accurate record of that uh, visitor's information. And it, it will instantly provide information on a sex offender who's completing that screening we will be able to pull custody information that is provided, by, provided to us by uh, parents and also has district-wide reporting on uh, daily absences uh, of our students and who is in attendance. That will be for the individual visitors. Again, we'll be communicating whenever we have a large assembly where parents are invited and so forth. Again, we're going to have to have different safety protocols depending on the situation. However, our goal is for the beginning of November to have the uh, Raptor Visitor Management System in place. We are still going to require uh, our, our, uh, our volunteers to have their background clearances with the state and federal. Again, we feel it's an extra layer that whenever we know that uh, anyone is going to have enough to be working with students individually, that they have those clearances whenever they're a visitor in our system. <coughs> Last year, if you remember in the spring, we implemented the district tip line, and uh, the system has been used about six different times up to this point, and it's been effective. It's 
We've had instances where students have just reported in. I need to let you know that a, a friend of mine is talking about hurting themselves and certain things, and we've been able to connect those students with the appropriate guidance counselors and or support that they needed in order to work with uh, the, the situation and thoughts that they were having. We've also had one or two threats that were put online. We immediately investigated it, turned it over to local law enforcement. Unfortunately, uh, those instances all turned out to be uh, where the, the student uh, did not need to have disciplinary action taken. However, we took the steps necessary, and the tip line system itself is just another layer for us to be able to find out what's going on. Whenever it comes to any type of emergency situation or where there's a threat in any way to an individual or the, uh, individ or the district itself, just telling an adult, encouraging our children to want to communicate with someone else, whether it is one of our SROs, a guidance counselor, a teacher, but just being comfortable enough to approach someone so that we can get them the appropriate uh, support that they need and we can react appropriately. I, if I may, the remarkable thing that I think we need to say about our students is that this has been used very appropriately. Yes. This has not been uh, something that people call in just to see what happens. They have, our students have taken this very seriously, which speaks very well to our students. And the majority of the reports have been from our students, but we've also had parents have shared information too. Again, we would say err on the side of caution. If you're not sure something should be shared or not, if it goes to the tip line, we have a number of administrators and support staff that are immediately notified, and we send it to the appropriate administrator to begin the investigation. But again, we encourage you, err on the side of caution. Share it, let us investigate, let us investigate and take the appropriate steps. Now earlier, uh, Joe was talking about some of the things he needs to get to know about the district as a, as a newcomer coming in and kind of assess what we've done up to this point. And we feel very confident and very proud of everything that we've been able to accomplish. We've updated our go kits and a number of things that were in compliance with all state and federal regulations. As a matter of fact, we had the gentleman who's head of security for the intermediate unit, which works with all 41 uh, school districts in Allegheny County, asked us to use our uh, emergency response manual as a model for other districts in the area. So I, I'm confident that everything we've done, and I really have to give the, a lot of credit to our building level principals who are working to educate our students, number one, on the new trainings that we're having. Then they're also making sure staff is educated and then they have the most difficult job because they're the ones that have to implement all of these things that are going on in the manual. So I, I really do appreciate all the efforts of our building level principals. Uh, last year, we mentioned in the spring, and we've done this the last several springs, where we've had our local law enforcement come in and do a threat assessment. And uh, our SROs from the uh, Kirk Vanderborn, who's with us from the middle school and uh, from the high school. Last year it was Dave Arreda. They went around to each of our buildings and did a threat assessment. And I won't read each one, but each one of these recommendations that they said made for improvements, we've already completed or are in the process of completing here in the near future. We have the lighting going on as we've had the renovation taking place at many of our, our buildings. The emergency kits have all been updated. Have to give Dan Breitkreitz credit. The radio, improvement to radio transmissions, we were finding in our large buildings that officers were, they would be able, they would lose radio contact with uh, other officers. So we went out and uh, Dan took the necessary steps to uh, improve a transmitter so that the signals will get from each of our buildings to uh, the officers so they can communicate in an emergency situation. Another one that was a high priority that's already taken place is making sure that the camera feeds to the police cruisers so when they're approaching the building they'll be able to 
begin to assess and gather the information they need to respond appropriately. And we have updated camera systems at all of our buildings. Uh, obviously, Kerr's in transition, but we did, er we did uh, add this past year, even though we're gonna be uh, going into a new building, we upgraded at Kerr, and we're, the, the system that we uh, implemented at right now at Kerr will be used at the new building also, but we need to make even more enhancements at the new building. So that's taken place district-wide, as well as the license plate readers at each one of our buildings. Uh, so all of those steps were recommendations given to us at the end of last year, and then again, they've all been completed or will be uh, by the end of the new calendar year, or the start of the new calendar year. And the final thing that I want to share before we turn it back over to Dr. Freeman, uh, today I think most of you are aware we were approached by Indiana Township this summer to uh, do a, a evacuation drill at each of our buildings. And uh, we will be doing it all six of our buildings at some point this year, weather depending and coordinating some different things. But I'm gonna ask starting Stephen Colucci and Officer Kirk Vandenberg to come up and share a little bit about what brought us to this point today and what the experience that they found from the evacuation that we did at Dorseyville Middle School and Hartwood Elementary. How you doing? Um, just to go over briefly on the evacuation drill and uh, how we got here. Uh, at the end of last year, Officer Vanderburg come to me, I uh, was talking about doing some more training for law enforcement and having uh, active shooting training with Alice come in. Uh, during the course of us setting up the training to come in, we also were talking about the evacuation drills at the school. Uh, there was a plan that was written down, all the plans were written down, and we've never actually implemented the plans by escorting the kids out to take them to the uh, location if they were needed to uh, be evacuated. So we decided to do that, um, and we were able to do that today, and everything went well. It took approximately one hour for the kids to be evacuated from Hartwood Elementary School and Dorseyville Middle School and taken up to uh, our municipal building, and then we, everyone was able to get into the municipal building as the plan was written and walk them back down uh, back to the school. Uh, as of right now, everything went well. There was a few things that we didn't get to sit down, but everything worked out very well considering the first time that we implemented the uh, drill. And we plan on doing more drills in the future. Um, with the uh, drill, we're in help with the local police departments, the fire department, the public works department, and our uh, our current social officer, who's assistant in close down was, and the uh, EMS company, who was also on site at Buffalo Station in case a child did get hurt during the evacuation um, to the remote facility. Um, so during this time, the roads um, between our um, community center and the school were shut down, and we had all the classes also um, closed down as well. So during the, the time, um, it was difficult walking on the, the road. Um, we had to switch with them while they were being transported um, back and forth to both of the locations. Um, what messaging is given to the kids before they do these drills? Like, I have two elementary school children. I know my youngest one would be kind of nervous and scared by this, right? So what are you telling them before this drill? We do some general, general education, but actually I'm going to put uh, Dr. Fishbaugh on the spot here. Let her give a response. I mean, we do some basic education. As an educator, you want to balance that of uh, providing so much information that they may become concerned or, you know, uh, just fixate on it, but also having them educated enough so that they can respond. But, uh, Rachel, would you mind sharing a few thoughts? So, at Hartwood, we wanted to make sure that we were not causing anxiety um, and also making sure that we were reducing the anxiety for our students. So, we do fire drills all the time. Um, we also practice lockdown drills all the time. So we decided to piggyback this drill on a fire drill. So the message at Hartwood was, we may need to leave the building at some point because it's unsafe. That could be due to weather, loss of electricity, loss of water, 
but we need to know and they need to know where that location is so they feel safe going there. So it's really more where do you go if the building is unsafe. Um, and I'll say today, um, they did a beautiful job. They transitioned beautifully. Um, they were so well behaved and they treated the drill, you know, and like it was something very important, which it is. Mr. Nottles, would you like to add anything from the middle school? Not particularly. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> they did a good job of summing up. We didn't have, we certainly had uh, home-based teachers go through a slideshow presentation with the students as far as what they would be doing, uh, why they were doing it, very general, um, keeping it very loose uh, with also trying to uh, let them know the importance of, uh, in the event of a real evacuation, that this would need to be taken um, seriously. And as far as I can tell, um, I was in my own training today, but I was able to watch the students exit the campus as well as return to the campus. As far as I can tell, um, they did take it very seriously. Um, and they were quiet and orderly, which what we learned in our drill today may not necessarily be the case in the case of a real emergency evacuation. Um, but we did, you know, certainly the, there was a lot of time consideration put into um, explanation to the students, to the staff, in terms of um, preparing everybody for the, for the drill. Yes, sir? also, um, but talking to the officers that were handling it, uh, Jeff Kurdi was uh, one of the main ones and the principals. So it was approximately one hour, um, and that is from when the kids walked out of the school, uh, the roads were completely shut down, and then they just walked up to the road and, and up to our building, and then they went into the locations where everyone was designated to put the uh, students for school. and. Uh, head count was done again, making sure all students were accountable, and then they walked in that time. So within that time frame, there's no um, exact time frame we would have if it, if it took, yeah, like if it took an hour and a half, no, I mean, that's, so that's just the time, that, um, I'm just, you know, that was the time it took to do it, uh, we weren't sure. schools, I would say, within uh, probably 20 minutes were completely emptied of the students and they were proceeding to walk out. But if, if I can add, there are no national statistics how fast a student should get out. But I'm sitting here thinking that's a great, we should be timing ourselves, number one. And number two is this is a scenario that's not going to be like the real scenario. There is going to be chaos along the route. But I do think practicing this more than twice a year is a good thing. And I think we do need, as a coach would do, to time how quickly we can get folks, kids out of the building and get them safely where they should be. Now, I'm sorry, I have to be factual here. We also have to worry about the roof. I, again, a scenario probably is not gonna be clean cut where kids actually go from point A to point B and there's no possibility of intrusion in, in that wall. So I think we have to be very um, diligent in all the possibilities that could happen. I know that our police force is, and I think the general back here, we have to be very careful too that we aren't frightening our kids, and it should be appropriate to the age level. But I do think we need to keep practicing what we're doing. Uh, the fear I have with this, and I'm the one responsible, is that then it, we begin to, everybody knows our plan. And how do you practice a plan without people knowing the plan? This is a very difficult situation to be in. Uh, but I do think it's better to plan and be as prepared as possible. And God forbid nothing like this ever happens. But 
we need to be prepared and what would we do? Um, I, I, I've been in a school when I taught years ago where we had a bank near us and it was robbed four or five times and we had lockdowns constantly. And if your kids were out playing, he, if the teachers went out with the kids, you had kids who scattered. We have to really think of all the possibilities. And I'm not saying this to frighten parents at all, but I think we are realistic in what our responsibilities are and trying to do the very best we can with that. I do think it's very smart that we actually time how fast we get kids out of the building under a scenario that probably is gonna be unlike the real one if it ever happens. But I think that's very smart to start timing that. Um, like so as far as getting out of the building, every month we're required to do fire drills in each of our buildings and we're, we, we, all of our buildings, the students are out of the building in under five minutes. The so. app does that also. We can time how quickly we get all the kids out. Does that app have like a drill function? Okay. Yes, it does. I'm sorry. I just want to say, I think we're not comparing apples and apples here. An hour was from the time the kids left the school till they came back to the school, not just to get to the township building, correct? Oh, yes. Yes. So it was. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, I, that's, I think we're, we're understanding this differently. That was a round trip, total drill from beginning to end, one hour. Out of the building, I don't know those times, but it was. I think I'm sorry. It's pretty good. Elementary. Oh, I think that's excellent. So, uh, but I, I still go back. I think this gentleman made a great point. We really should be timing this and knowing what it looks like. Um, I think it's also fair to say that this happened this afternoon while there was this major training going on with a bunch of other people and to, to take the whole thing and put it together and understand it hasn't happened yet. You know, there's a lot more to talk about and review and all those kind of things. This is several hours later, but, but, literally. But we're getting started and that's, I think, a positive. Yep. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Schmidt in just one second. He can close us out. But I want to say I work with a lot of superintendents here. Forty. There's a lot, and I like I don't even know how many, but I think 41 or 42. You would, yeah, 41. Um, we are the only school district that has that I know of that I've been told that has a relationship with. It is 60 municipalities, right? Where we meet with our police chiefs twice a year, usually maybe more, and we sit down and we talk these things through. Uh, the security team that we're building was approved by our police chiefs. They said, this is the way you should go with this, and they're the experts in this. I think we're very fortunate in our communities that we're able to work with smart, dedicated people who really have the best interest of the community and our children at heart. So thank all of you very much for what you do for us and the fact that we collaborate and, and make this work. So with that said, I want to now turn it over to Mr. Schmidt and let him give his closing remarks. Thank you. So I don't know what to say because Gene just said everything I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, first of all, I do want to thank and, and welcome Officer Kazarian. And I have to tell you that uh, I had not met him until our board meeting last week. I had a nice little five-minute chat in the parking lot. Coincidentally, I had a work function this past weekend uh, with a bunch of uh, EMS and police and fire folks happened to be there, and so, who I've known for decades, literally many of these people, who approached me to say that you guys have got a hell of a job there. You actually got a job in school. <laughs> and uh, that is you know, independent verification for me that a great selection was made by those folks that, that uh, solicited to look for a candidate and they hired Joe, so we're glad to have you here. Um, you know, we also have, so our schools are made of six different municipalities. Interestingly, our six schools are only in two of them, right? We have three schools in Indiana Township and three schools in O'Hara Township, but we're serviced by six different municipalities. The meetings over the last couple of years, these police chiefs and officers sitting in front of me, have, and this is predates even this time, so have stood up in amazing, amazing ways. And I'd like to participate in these meetings and bring their departments forward and their officers forward to be in our schools in a routine basis, like I'm telling you, it doesn't exist anywhere else. The cooperation and the level of it is unbelievable. I want to make sure they get they're commended for that because it's not normal. Um, for you know, the first day of school, we're out there. They've got to do a pretty cool thing and ride school buses, right, with the kids. It's a lot of fun, and uh, I'm standing there, and the officers are all there interacting with the students and so forth. Um, 
seeing a graduate uh, of Fox Chapel who's a new officer in Indian Township walk in, and the realization by her fifth grade teacher of who she was. Uh, those kind of things are what happens in great communities, and that's the kind of things that are happening here. So lastly, I think two things we missed that are really important safety things. There's been so much that is happening. Uh, two other key things, we talked about evacuating the campus today at Parkwood and Dorseyville. For how many decades we had one driveway, one way in and one way out of those schools with all those students. We have two now. It's an incredible safety addition. The new vestibule at Parkwood to uh, increase, uh, improve safety access to that school and protect those students and our faculty there. Uh, you know, it's, there has been, the, the staff and administration have done, these are folks who are busy, right? And they, they should be busy, right? But they have stepped up and done unbelievable amounts of extra work to achieve everything that's happened here tonight. And uh, so I really want to thank them for the additional work. Uh, it is uh, some amazing accomplishments. More to come. This is a job that's never done. And uh, lastly, I'd like to thank you, that came, all of you that came tonight. And I'd ask the next time the meeting comes, grab four of your neighbors and bring them with you. Right? The more people are having these conversations, asking questions, right? the best message to the students is coming from us. Not from me, actually, from our educators and from the parents. So that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs>